Welcome to the Real Relentless Podcast by Century 21 Tri Cities, a real estate brokerage in Eastern Washington. Okay, so we are here with Jane Fallon, one of Century 21 top agents here. And I am just fascinated by your story in real estate and how you got started because real estate wasn't your first career. No. No. You can you just tell us a little bit about um, the beginnings of Jane Fallon? So. Okay, at the very beginning, I came to America in 1980. Uh, I have a great uncle and aunt that lived here in the Tri-Cities, and some cousins came to visit them and decided I quite like this laid-back, quiet little place compared to London, England. Um, my first real job um, was actually in the medical field, and I come from a long line of nurses. Um, not that I was a nurse, but I was a neurological tech, uh, for Dr. Washington here in Tri-Cities, and then I opened the sleep lab for Dr. Hamner for doing apnea and things like that. And then, sadly, my identical twin in 1995 died of breast cancer, and I decided I'm just not going to be that funny anymore in the medical field, you know, because you need to be able to say, don't worry, Yes, it does look a little scary, but it's going to be okay, or, you know, whatever, be positive. And so once that happened, I kind of wanted out of the medical field. And even though I didn't um, have any interest whatsoever, not at all, in video games, I opened a video game store uh, at the Uptown called Intergames, which I had for almost nine years which um, I, I did well, um, maybe should have got out of the business a couple of years sooner than I did. Um, but uh, in retrospect, I wish that I had just gone ahead and, and been a realtor right from the second that I got out of being uh, uh, in the medical field. I wish I had just gone straight into real estate. Uh, my mom was always getting she never drove she didn't drive and she used to get me on weekends to drive her to this house or that house uh, and she'd just go right up to the front door and knock on the door and say you know let me know if you ever decide to sell this uh, I'd be interested and she was huge on houses and we were very lucky to to have a lovely home so yeah so anyway I wish I had just always been in uh, in real estate but yeah I've had some I've had some fun jobs so your mom's fearlessness just to go up to a random stranger's house and knock on the door, do you think that's like where you get it from? Because you just have this personality where you could talk to anyone about anything. I think I get it I get it from both my parents. My you know, my dad was a famous jazz bass player and a very funny guy. Um, and my mom dad was like the comedian and mom was like the straight one, you know. She'd keep the straight face, he'd make a joke, but then she'd She'd kind of finished the joke, so it was, you know, kind of the ba boom side of the side of the family. So, and we had to have dinner at six o'clock. Um, we had to go and sit down and be there and have dinner. She's made it, and if we're not there, there had better be a good reason why we're not there. And of course, we didn't, we weren't allowed to uh, answer the phone or watch TV or do any. Of course, we didn't have cell phones back then, but. We had to sit and chat and communicate. and So I think that was a big part of it, because believe it or not, when I was younger, I was very shy. <laughs> I know, it's hard to believe, but I really was. I was very shy. And so it was one day my mom said, uh, I need you to come downstairs. I need you to be part of the, the people that are here and socialize. Um, and I just want you to know that being shy isn't cute, it's rude. Very straightforward. Very, very serious. Is that the moment that everything changed? Well, that was when I was like, I couldn't, you know, I wasn't allowed to kind of stay out of the limelight. I had to be in there and I had to be part of what was going on. So, yeah. (laughs) So, I want to go back to the whole video game store. Okay. Ownership. All right. So, you had no interest in video games. None. It was a huge mistake (laughs) in my life. Um, but well, I mean, it wasn't a, it was it was a huge mistake from a social standpoint because um, it's nothing but you know uh, men and and, and boys. <laughs> so, we don't have to expand on that, but basically that wasn't 
great for making friends and what have you. So, uh, and then secondly, um, a friend of mine was doing it, selling video games out of his basement and doing very well. He said, I'm going to go to Seattle to open a store, but I think you should open one here. Um, and that's how I, I started and that's how I did it. Um, and I don't regret the, the experience of running your own business um, and all that, but um, I just would much, in retrospect, that's probably the only thing I regret that I, I spent eight years doing that instead of eight years doing real estate. So in those eight to nine years that you did that, you, there wasn't one time that you fell in love with a video game? <laughs> no, not once. No, I never played them. Never played them. So people came up to you and they asked you, hey, what's this game about? I hire, I hired <laughs> young men who were very, very... Uh, into it and knew how to answer all the questions and I'm stuck on level four and blah 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 and there's so and so is blown away my blah 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 and I can't get and it's like yeah no handle it no, no. <laughs> you handle it okay <laughs> well what kind of was the catalyst then that set you forth in real estate I mean pretty f- I, th- I think um Soon as soon as I got out, as uh, soon as the video game thing wasn't working anymore, because it went from I was the only store in town that was doing buy sell trade video games, uh, so you could bring in used games and get a new one for four used ones. As um, soon as everybody and their best friends started doing that, then it was time to get out. And uh, and I, you know, I don't really quite exactly remember. I think. I think it's just my mom said, you should go, you know, you really should go into real estate. And I had a few friends that said I should because um, uh, I won't name his name, but he worked for Windermere, lovely guy. And uh, when he, he was an agent and when he um, like had a listing and maybe we got it on, he got it under contract and then it fell apart. He would, to make the buyer feel better, the seller, excuse me, feel better, he would call me up and say, hey, Jane, do you want to come and look at this property for me? So they feel more comfortable that it's getting another showing right away. <laughs> and funny enough, one of the times that I did that, I actually bought the house. Oh, wow. I, it was my, my B duplex, and I actually bought it. So I kind of got there and went, actually, I really like this. I think I'd like to. <laughs> to buy this and then I knew so much about the government properties the A's, B's, C's, M's, R's, Q's, uh, the square footage, what kind of wood floors, I just sort of really got into knowing all about those um, that a lot of um, agents even though I wasn't an agent would call me up and say hey um, how many square feet is that? Do you, can you tell me, does that have a blah, 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 basement, whatever? So, yeah. So then he said, you need to be a realtor. And I said, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I will. <laughs> yeah. So when you decided just to jump right in, um, how many years before you came on to Century 21? It was about, you know, I'm trying to think. It was a little bit longer than it should have been. I. <laughs> I got I got licensed in 2005, um, and then uh, my mother passed away, and I ended up having to go home before uh, she passed away. I went home and looked after her in London, and then I needed to look after my dad. Um, so I was kind of just back and forth, back and forth, and then eventually um, in 2000 and. 12, oh, was it? Yeah, two th- January 2012, uh, the company I was working for um, qu- went out of business. They decided not to do it anymore, SK Realty. Um, and I actually left two weeks before I found out that they actually were completely going out of business. Um, and uh, my lender, uh, Dorothy Stevens, was working with a, a guy in her office, and he said, oh, uh, Vicky Monagudo is starting, a, uh, you, should, you should interview with her. And I said, Vicky who? <laughs> so I, I didn't know who she was. 
and uh, the, the the rest they say is history but you know then I she I think you know the story right that she she scheduled 15 minutes yes because she didn't like the the look of my picture she didn't like my stats which was reasonable they were not good at all um, and so yeah so that's so then I got here and and that 15 minutes became almost two hours in fact, the receptionist at the time had to come bang on the door and say, Yo, blah, 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 30 years here, and has been for 45 minutes. Yeah. And she's like, no, <laughs> I'm busy. So, yeah, so I started, like, there and then uh, with Vicky and never looked back. So what was it about Century 21 and Vicky that made you want to come, especially when in the instance when you initially thought that she didn't like you? Well, I, I didn't think, I didn't know that she'd only scheduled 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. I had no idea. And so when she came out into the, into the lobby to, to say, hi, I'm Vicky, follow me, um, she actually says that by the time we got to her office, she knew uh, that the 15 minutes was a mistake uh, and that she'd want, she was going to want to get to know me a little better. Um, but as you know, it, I mean, it was, it was a, it just an instant. I like you, you like me. Yeah. And it was just like, you know how you do sometimes you meet somebody, you don't know them from Adam, but you know, oh, we click. We don't know why we click, but we click. Yeah. And, uh, so we clicked and, uh, we've been clicking ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You guys are a good team. <laughs> sometimes she shouts at me, and sometimes I shout back, but we get over it, and it doesn't happen very often, but a couple of times in the, what is it, 10 years? Yeah. 10 years. Well, for 10. Yeah, so it's been good. It's been very good. I wouldn't go anywhere else. <laughs> That's good to hear. Um, I kind of want to go back, backwards in time a little bit, so we're, we're jumping through the timeline. So you mentioned how you, you came here to the States, but what made you move? <laughs> yes. Well, oddly enough, I had a job um, in a place called Hampstead in England, which is very exclusive, and I worked for a real estate company called oh. Benham and Reeves. And my job, although some people called it Venom and Thieves, but that's a long story. <laughs> so, um, but no, Benham and Reeves, they were a very well-known um, real estate company in Hampstead. And my job was filing clerk, and also I would do viewings. So I would um, take a, a client and drive them around and show them not houses to buy, houses to rent. So, yeah, so I kind of got learned a little bit of the chitty chatty there and I yeah. got to, I got to drive some pretty cool people around. Almost, almost got to drive Barbara Streisand, but that didn't work out at the last minute and I ended up with her manager. <laughs> um, but uh, Mrs. Gucci I did. I spent the day with Mrs. Gucci. So that was pretty cool. And the Bay City Rollers, which will mean nothing to you, but to people in England, it's like, you know, quite a famous group. Wow. Oh, and Marvin Gaye. I didn't meet Marvin Gaye, but I had to deal with his, um, uh, one of his guys. They were looking for somewhere to stay in London. Okay, so you had this awesome job, it sounds like. And you got well, I don't know if the job is, <laughs> I mean, the driving around was fun, but being a filing clerk and my boss was a tyrant. I mean, he was, you know, he was, uh, he was just a very, very serious, you know, I want, and, and I, I want it, if he said I want 29 Sudbury Street, I had to be able to pull that file and have all the documents in that file, boom, ready to go. So the second I had something to file, I had to get it filed and I had to file it properly. All right, so then after that, so then how come you came to the States then? I came to, uh, he actually, um, my boss actually uh, paid um, f to, uh, for part of my flight as kind of a thank you wow. uh, for being a, a good junior, as we call him in England. And uh, I came over and really liked it and decided, mm, you know what, I think, 
I think I want to do this. And so, so I did. Wow. So I, I went and I came back, and then my parents and everyone was like, no, don't do it, don't do it. But I did it. <laughs> and so I've been here, yeah, since 1980 and became a citizen and mm, quite a bit later. We're so glad you did. Thank you. All right, and now we're going to jump forward a little bit to when you first got your license. Yes. So can you do, tell us a little bit about that first year and what it was like? Um, it, it was difficult because there really wasn't, in the company I was with, it really wasn't structured. And looking back, I think it really was sort of starting to uh, kind of, you know, fall apart. So um, I really didn't do very well. And then, of course... We're looking at 2008 and 2009, mm -hmm. 2010 and 11 that were super, super tough. Um, and so, like I said, I was, um, I still managed to sell a few houses, but um, I think the year before I came to work for Vicky, I think we figured out I'd made 16,000 that whole year, which was not enough. Which is <laughs> not ideal not ideal <laughs> not enough but so, now look at you you're a top agent and consecutively it yes, seems it seems <laughs> i wish i could touch wood <laughs> oh no yeah it was, it was a little bit you know <laughs> now we count your chickens till they're hatched very true but you know just over the years then what are like maybe the top three things that you've learned and that you kind of pass on to to other new agents I think the, number one uh, is to get clients to meet new people, do open houses, and not to look at an open house as um, something that's a real pain on a weekend, but to actually go and do an open house with the intention of hopefully meeting people. And, and, and I, I kind of feel like, and I've said this before, that once I learned that I don't go onto a car lot unless I really am interested in buying a car, um, most, most, not all, but most people don't go to an open house unless, even if they can't at this point, they want to mm -hmm. buy a house. And so once you kind of understand that, then the whole attitude towards doing open houses uh, changes. I think the next thing is, um, even though I can talk until the cows come home, uh, listen talk to people and find out, you know, why are you here, where do you live, what are your thoughts, are you renting, do you own, do you live with mom and dad, da da da, kind of glean as much information as you can so that you can, you know, help them with some informed decisions about what they need to do next to reach their goal. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so all of these, these that one of those wonderful nuggets of advice, has that? How does that? Or do, would you say that that's helped you um, become a represented agent for Titan? Um, for Titan, pretty much. I really wanted to work for Titan. I really wanted to. I mean, originally I wanted to work for a builder, but um, then I kind of really locked into uh, of all the builders that Vicky was representing. Um, I kind of thought yeah, I really like Titan the most, and I like their their homes and the finishes. There, they feel a little bit more warm and more sort of a little bit more European uh, with the way that they oftentimes will do the ceilings and some of the thicker wood finishings um, around the doors and um, and so I I'm um, not sure that Vicky felt that I was really going to be any good representing a builder. Um, but um, I started to just uh, shadow Michelle Boucher. Mm -hmm. And I asked, I just let her know that if she ever needed coverage on her open houses um, or had more than one open house or uh, one model home, that I was there. And so I think it was about, I'd have to ask Michelle, but I think it was at least three years of doing, constantly doing open houses that eventually... Uh, a, a new development came along um, and they said you're up <laughs> and so then I got to get my own development in Horn Rapids and was able to prove that 
I can do this. I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So that's that's how I, and that's what I tell our agents here too. You know, figure out who you think you would like to represent, and then see if you can connect with the listing agent, and just be as helpful um, as you can. Right. Yeah. And I love to hear stories like that of, especially with you and Michelle, because you two are two peas in a pod. I feel like we're so different. But, <laughs> yeah. But we work very well together. Yeah. We have a respect for each other. And how there's not competition. You know, it's. I don't not know if there's not competition. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I mean, with I think realistically with all realtors there is, um, but but it, it's a friendly competition and mm-hmm. it's a it's a, a help each other competition. Right. But. But yes, I would love to sell more houses than everybody <laughs> in the office um, if I could. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, you know, being able to kind of shadow Michelle, and yeah. then when it came time, you know, she's—I'm sure she probably, you know, talked you up too. And oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, I have a lot to thank her for too, because when they got to thinking about who was gonna uh, take over Home Rapids, then. Uh, I, I do believe that Michelle said, I think Jane should, and then, and then the owner said, no, I think that sounds good. And they love you. I believe so. <laughs> no, they do. I hope so, but I believe so. Um, it seems like you, ha- you all have a really great time with Titan. Yeah. And especially over the holidays. And yeah. Yeah, they're pretty generous when it comes to gifts. <laughs> but there are two with, uh, and I, I don't know if all builders do this, but if... If you're the buyer's agent for a Titan home, then you can pretty much count on getting a pretty nice gift uh, from Titan at the end of the year, even if you don't, just because you've sold a Titan home. Wow. Yeah, so the, and they're nice gifts. That's very thoughtful. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Oh, that was a crap gift. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, they are. They're great right. gifts. I got those headphones this year, which I love. <laughs> yes, because you're big on, on headphones and, and music. I'm big on music. I like to just slap my headphones on, lay down, and listen to the music. It's kind of how I fall asleep usually. All right, who are your top three favorite musicians? Number one is my dad. Aww. Oh, uh, yes. That would be <laughs> number one. Of course, he's not with us anymore. Um, you know, I really have a lot. Um, I was just listening to Alita Adams, Get Here If You Can, great vocal, piano vocalist. Um, but I, I really am a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll, a little bit jazz. I can't stand um, rap or wait, I can't, I can't stand that. It's got to have more than three chords. But, uh, but yeah, you know, Stevie Wonder, uh, you know. Rascal Flats. Yeah. Well rounded. All over, all over everything. Shirley Bassey back in the day, the Beatles. Yeah, my dad was on a Beatle album. So, yeah, love them all. All right. So, the question I know you practice some instruments. I just mess around. <laughs> okay. I mess around. I, oddly enough, I don't drink, and I got that from my dad, who you, you know, was a very rare being that you would be a, you know, a theatrical agent and a jazz bass player and not drink. But my father didn't drink, and that was one blessing I got from him. I don't drink, um, which really was a blessing because a lot of family members had issues with drinking. We kind of way back when in the in the gene pool there was quite a few heavy drinkers. Um, but. So how did I get onto that? I just got lost. Oh, and drinking and instruments. <laughs> oh, and so thank you. So he he specialized uh, as a theatrical agent. He specialized in piano vocalists, and we used to put all the entertainment for southern France, southern Spain, Germany, the air bases, the American air bases in Europe. Um, but we specialized in piano vocalists. And my dad asked me one time when I came home, he said, I just want you to stay home for a year. Really just learn to play the piano and, you know, get yourself a repertoire of X amount of, you know, a good two and a half hours of songs. And then, you know, I'd like to send you off to Spain or wherever. And I was like, no. (laughs) No, I have no 
no desire. I like to write my own songs. I like to, to write poetry. I do quite a bit of that. Um, but I had no desire to be, as you can see, I don't really like, I don't really have, I can, if I have to, I can stand up and give a speech and tell a joke. I can do that if I have to, but um, I'm more comfortable my dream would have been to have been, you know, like a Diane Warren and just been a famous songwriter that nobody really knew, but everybody loved the songs. But anyway, um, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to be in the, the limelight. So, but I do like to, you know, I have, I don't know, five ukuleles and right. three guitars ukuleles. and pianos <laughs> and I've got violins and banjos and yeah. Wow. I've got, but I just, not that I can play any of them well, I can't, so, you know. But still, like that hunger for, and the ability, your musicality. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, got that from dad. <laughs> not mum, mum couldn't sing. <laughs> okay. We would ask her to stop singing. <laughs> yeah, I feel like she was literally, stop. there is such a thing as tone deaf, and she was tone deaf. But anyway. We can't all be. No, it just goes to show, you know, different strokes for different folks. <laughs> Well, all right, so coming back to the brokerage. So you've been here, you know, basically since the beginning. Turns out now, since Michael Mackey is no longer an agent, I'm the first one. <laughs> I wasn't the literally one. the first one that <laughs> Vicky hired. I was, I think, the, the fourth okay. in the first month because I started January 13th, mm -hmm. and she opened the company January 1st. Um, but... I've out survived them all. I'm still here. <laughs> How would you describe your journey over the past decade then with Century 21 and how have you seen the brokerage grow and Oh, I mean it's 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 grown tremendously and we those of us that have been here for a long time, you know, uh, we appreciate that you got to have new blood, you've got to have new agents and and uh but if we'd have had our way, we would like to have stayed with just the original 12 <laughs> and called it good. But um, yeah, no, I mean, coming from the little office that we used to have to this, you know, beautiful office and um, and just watching Vicky grow and Lisa grow and yeah, it's just tremendous, unbelievable. So where do you see yourself in the next 10 years then? Uh, if I'm not dead, I'll be here. Stop. <laughs> I'll be here selling houses until I can't be here and sell houses anymore. I'm pretty sure that's. So I'm, I I hope that we can get a that I can get another development uh, with Titan and just plod along, doing what I do. You know I've I've managed to sit back and watch, you know agents um, that were given an opportunity and have had the opportunity to make a lot of money. Uh, representing a builder or just you know just and and becoming a little arrogant I think you have to really stay in your lane and really understand that 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 this is a team effort you know like you helping get us with podcasts and and advertising and social media which we all know I'm crap at um you know, and then back to Amanda and all the back office and everything that they do, because Vicky's goal was always to have us just be able to get out there and get listings and sell houses. That's all she wants us agents to worry about doing. So um, I think you really do if you end up, and I've had a couple of years where I, I ended up making some seriously good money, you know, and you can, you can start to be like, Thank you very much. Step aside. I'm here. Uh, when again, it's just trying to keep everything in perspective and and understanding you're going to have some great, great, uh, great months and you're going to have some bad months and and you need all the help you can get. It takes a village. It does take a village. It really does. And actually, funny enough. In this business, I think it, it does more than a lot of other businesses. Uh, you know, like um, we all know that uh, last year I got pretty sick. And so 
you've got to be able to have friends and, and, and agents that are willing to step in and say, don't worry about it. I'll show that house. I'll do this open house. You know, I'm there for you. It's going to be okay. Um, and, and yeah, so very much, very much so. We have to, and our brokers opens and all of that. We kind of, you know, we're like, we'll go to them. Sometimes we don't want to. Sometimes I'll say, no. what's the food? Right. You know, are the sandwiches good? Other people are like, was it going to be an alcohol? But anyway, no. So, yeah, no, it really does. And and especially with our office, with everything that is provided for us, um, you know, it's great that we've got, you know, such great people like Rachel and Amanda and all the people. I won't be able to be like the Academy Awards. I won't be able to remember right. anybody's name, but but they're all... They're all great, and I, I for one, couldn't do it without them. Yay. Yay. Or Vicky, for that matter. Couldn't do it without her. So thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you. And sharing your story. This is my first podcast. I've never done a podcast before. I feel very honored. Thank you. I don't (laughs) even really know what it means, but okay. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. Yeah. That's it for this episode of the Real Relentless Podcast. Thank you for listening, and we hope you'll tune in next time.